A question that comes up quite a lot is why didn't the Germans just copy the T-34? That is a very interesting question for many reasons. First off, this was actually suggested by German officers at the front lines. On November 18, 1941, the Panzer Special Commission from the Army Weapons Office arrived at the headquarters of the 2nd Panzer Army in Orel. On the basis of the latest combat experience, it was to be clarified which measures should be taken against the absolute superiority of the T-34. The frontline officers suggested that the Russian tank should be rebuilt immediately. Interestingly, the last sentence the source referred to is already from October 1941, so before the Panzer Commission arrived at the front. Second, as discussed in my previous video, the Germans used a lot of captured equipment. Third, they also copied at least one Soviet weapon system, namely the 120mm mortar and put it in service as well. So the question is, why didn't the Germans copy and produce the T-34 as well? After all, we know that they used the T-34 in service. It was called Mittlerer Panzerkampfwagen 747R Russisch T-34, according to Jens. It was used in frontline units, not just rear area units, like some other equipment. Yet those were captured T-34s, not T-34s that were produced by the Germans. When it comes to producing the T-34 by the Germans, we have two possibilities here. One option would be producing the T-34 in occupied territories in the Soviet Union itself. Another option would be producing the T-34 within Germany. So first, what about the production in the Soviet Union? Well, sadly, there's not much information out there. From all we know, it was not done. Yet while in the German military archive, I stumbled across a file directory of Waffenprüf 6. Whereas Wapru stands for Waffenprüfamt, which roughly means Weapons Review Office. Now Waffenprüf 6 was the department for tanks and motorization. Now that file directory had a very interesting entry for December 1941 with the title Production Possibilities for the Panzerkampfwagen T-34 in the USSR. Sadly, I could not find the report itself, yet it shows that there was at least enough consideration given to producing the T-34 in the occupied areas of the Soviet Union to create a report on it. Now several problems come to mind producing the T-34 in the occupied regions. First, a large part of the Soviet industry was evacuated in 1941. Between August and October 1941, 80% of the Russian industry was on wheels. Ammunition plants, tank engine plants, armor plate mills. The railroads were jammed with the movement of 2.5 million men westward to the front and 1,500 industrial plants trundling east. Second, even if the factories would have been available, it would also be necessary to have enough qualified personnel, which was unlikely since those were probably evacuated as well. Third, complexity. Usually certain parts of a tank were produced at certain factories. Remember, a tank is extremely complex. You have optics, turret, hull, gun, engine, transmission, etc. This would not require one factory, yet several, which would also mean different kinds of personnel and also different locations, which brings us to the next point, the all-time favorite of everyone. Fourth, logistics. Considering that the German supply system on the Eastern Front was generally extremely stretched and the infrastructure not necessarily up to scratch, shipping around tank parts and or other various resources to produce them would put another huge burden on the German logistical system and thus likely further reducing the flow of supplies to the front lines. Now before we look at the next case, namely of producing the T-34 in Germany, we also must take a short look at the initial designs for the Panzerkampfwagen 5 namely the Panzerkampfwagen VK 3002 DB, where DB stands for Daimler Benz. As you can see, this one looks rather similar to the T-34. If the Germans would have produced that vehicle in large quantities, I'm rather sure that most people would have called it a copy of the T-34 nowadays. Yet let us move on to the case of producing the T-34 in Germany itself. As mentioned in the intro, the frontline officers wanted that the German industry copy the T-34, yet the German engineers were not so happy with the T-34. On September 11, 1941, a delegation of the German constructors inspected in Kummersdorf the enemy armored vehicles captured during the summer. The experts come to a rather negative judgment about the quality of the Soviet tanks. 
Now, it is also important to note that Guderian in his memoirs noted that it was not possible to recreate several components of the T-34 in a short time, most notably the diesel engine. The issue is, Guderian's memoirs are known for various errors. I'm quite skeptical about the statement, since using a German engine in the T-34 with some adaptations should be possible. After all, the US Sherman tank is rather well known to be used with a wide range of different engines. For instance, radial gasoline engine, twin inline diesel engine, 60 degree V gasoline engine, and a multi-bank gasoline engine, according to Honeycutt. As such, it is not so unreasonable to think that the Germans could have copied the T-34 while using a domestic engine, if they really wanted. So what were the problems that the German engineers had with the T-34? This is especially important since the reports of the troops from the front line are usually very positive about the T-34, although they were fighting the T-34, not using it. It is important to keep in mind here that the grass is always greener on the other side. One of the first aspects that comes to mind is visibility. If you look at the photos of the T-34s in German service, quite often they had a typical German commander's cupola mounted on top of the turret. Another issue was the T-34 had a two-man turret, not a three-man turret. As such, the commander was also the gunner at the same time, which created an overload on the commander, thus reducing combat effectiveness. This becomes even more apparent if we look at the Czechoslovakian LT-1038. That was used by the Germans, yet only after some adaptations and is well known as the Panzer 38T. In order to accommodate the gunner required by the German armor branch, it was necessary to reduce the original ammunition supply by three magazines with six rounds each, 18 rounds. Yet there were other problems with the T-34. Although the firepower of the 76mm gun was generally seen as very positive, Kavalerchik points out that there were some issues here as well. One of the main design flaws of the T-34 tank, which significantly reduces its combat power, is the low rate of fire, low speed aiming and low accuracy of the tank's fire. There were further issues which are discussed in more detail in my Panzer III vs T-34 video. Now although a few people claimed in the comment section that I bashed the T-34, it is known that the Soviets clearly were aware of these shortcomings. As such, they had planned to produce an improved version of the T-34 namely the T-34M in September 1941. The issue is, in June 1941, the Germans invaded the Soviet Union, and as you all know, Germans tend to complicate things. Considering that some people get quite anxious if Germans are looking in the general direction, imagine them shooting in your general direction. As such, the Soviets shelved the T-34M and put the T-34 in mass production, while also continuously improving it because it was clearly good enough. But back to copying the T-34. One major issue is copying such a complex piece of equipment is not so easy, as Michaelis points out. Probably in line with the critical attitude of the other members of the Panzer Commission, Sauer, State or Secretary of the Reich's Ministry of Armaments and War Production, later emphasized that a replica would have required almost the same startup time as a new development. So the answer is rather simple. Why copy a weapon system that has some flaws when you can likely produce a better piece of equipment in about the same time, as pointed out by Roman Töppel. In fact, even if the Germans wanted to, it would be a considerable effort for them to copy the T-34. This is because it would first require the manufacture of production machines to be able to reproduce the parts of the Soviet tank. And why go to such an effort when the T-34 is defective in many ways anyway? To summarize, the Wehrmacht had no issues with using foreign equipment and weapons of all kinds in the armed forces. In some cases they also copied it and produced it in their own foreign or domestic factories. Yet copying the T-34 was too much of an effort due to the complexity of the weapon system and some inherent design flaws. Additionally, producing the T-34 in the occupied regions of the Soviet Union was problematic to the requirements of qualified workers, production facilities, resources and of course, logistics. I hope this answers this question. Thank you here to Roman Töppel for providing me with sources, thank you as well to Military Aviation History for feedback, and thanks to Andrew for reviewing the script. A big thank you as well here to my Patreon and subscribers and supporters that make videos like this possible. As always, sources are listed in the description, thank you for watching, and see you next time.